So we have developed self-healing concrete. This is a concrete which, when damaged, can reheal itself. Very much like, for example, if our hands get uh, a scratch, um, we would like to have our skin repair itself. And without any band-aids, without any medication, uh, same here, we would like the concrete, uh, a, a bridge or a road, uh, after it experienced some damage, we would like it to recover all its good properties. Normal concrete are brittle, so when you bend it or pull it, they just fracture into pieces, very much like uh, glass. And in a structure, let's say during an earthquake load, it may shake like that, and of course you then you get this kind of failure. Now this is obviously un not very safe. Uh, if you were thinking of this as part of a building which you live in, uh, that wouldn't be one that you like very much. Uh, rather you would like the material to hold this load even though it has been damaged, but being able to still carry the load. The amount of strain normal concrete can take is about 0.01%. In contrast, let's say this piece of specimen, for example, has actually been pulled up to three and a half percent. So it's still holding. There are cracks here. And as I pointed out, there are a lot of micro crack damage. So why do we need self-healing? Well, we want the material to recover even the slight loss of properties. To make them self-heal, uh, all that is necessary would be simply air and water. Okay. So you can see here um, a specimen that has been already pre-damaged in a machine. Pulled by pulling on this specimen, uh, we see these very tiny micro cracks and the white lines are showing that they have been rehealed. This specimen, this particular one, has actually undergone several uh, repeated damage and rehealing and it goes back to its original state. A lot of cement grains in concrete material are never fully hydrated. That means they are never used up uh, in turning from cement into concrete uh, after water is mixed in it. And they just stay dormant. When those cement grains are exposed to water and, and air, um, they are able to uh, undergo the self-healing process. There has been observations of uh, concrete cracks being healed uh, in old structures. Um, in the Roman buildings, which are more like uh, mortar, lime mortars, uh, some cracks are found to have been rehealed. So self-healing in concrete is really not new. Difference between what we created in this laboratory and regular concrete is that uh, we want to make sure that this kind of self-healing takes place all the time, every time. We developed bendable concrete and this version of self-healing uh, bendable concrete uh, for ma three main reasons. One is obviously for uh, safety. Uh, safety in particular, for example, under large loads like earthquakes um, or even bomb blast. Uh, we like to make sure that our bridges and roads hold itself together and people can escape. Durability is another reason. Uh, we want to make sure that we don't require uh, lots of maintenance. Every summer uh, you repair the roads. That brings to the third reason, which is sustainability. If we can reduce the amount of repair needs, we obviously use less material over the lifetime of a bridge. We emit less carbon dioxide, uh, we use less energy, so in that way we are reducing the carbon and energy footprints of our uh, infrastructures. So this is our little contribution to make uh, this uh, built and natural environment that we so much desired uh, to be a reality, not for just this generation but for future generations.